too. We've gone 1,200 miles and we're not even to Indiana yet. But speed isn't the thing when you're on a voyage of discovery. That's our next stop, Indiana. Kokomo, Valparaiso, French Lick. It's gonna be a great day. But first, there's the daily feeding of the beast. Woo, not pretty. What's going on in Griffin, Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> Folks in Griffin said there was a big tornado here in 1925. Wow. That was a bad one. But that not much has happened here since. 85, 14. Until our big fill up. Could be a new record for Griffin, Indiana. I don't know. You can get an idea how far you've been on your RV vacation by the bug patterns, the number of bugs, the density of the bug buildup. A pattern like that, it's about 672 miles. Every town you visit these days seems to want to be the capital of something especially squirrels. Three towns claim to be the capital of black squirrels, three towns claim to be the capital of white squirrels, and be prepared, they get a little nutty about the critters. So we headed over to Alney, Illinois, the one true white squirrel capital, according to this spoke squirrel. <laughs> we get a lot of recognition um, because of the white squirrel. You, do you get a lot of visitors coming? Oh yes, busloads of squirrel watchers. So you think it's a good draw for tourists and people coming oh. in from out of town spending money and all that? I've said this before, it's like having white gold, you know. White gold. White gold. If white squirrels are white gold, Alney is their Fort Knox, protecting them with more laws and inalienable rights than humans have around here. You're not supposed to harass a squirrel. You're not supposed to. Uh, you're not supposed, you know, to, not supposed to run over a squirrel. You're not supposed to go ahead and injure a squirrel. You can't take them out of town either, right? Oh well, no. Even to a, <laughs> they're supposed to be left. Even alone. to a movie oh, yeah. or. Uh, no. <laughs> can't take them to the movie. <laughs> we fled back across the Indiana line. Back home again in Indiana. And we're up the next morning, communing with nature in the wild. It's got a bedroom in the back and with a gaggle of Kiwanis wives who just had to have a tour. I don't think we made enough English muffins this morning. So where are you all from? Manila, Philippines. Philippines. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. Rochester, New York. Knoxville, Tennessee. Clover, Wisconsin. Sintrada, Belgium. Belgium, you're the one we can't drop off. <laughs> and the Philippines. Can't drop off anything. Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio. And California. And she we can take. <laughs> There's some guys out there. There's Hi, guys. Oh, oh, their husbands are here. Oh, no. <laughs> Women love my big RV. When you're in Indiana, you have to take the Kokomo exit, if only for the name. Wherever you go, there's always something to see. could live in there. And sure enough, Kokomo is home to the biggest sycamore tree stump in the world. The tree was 100 feet tall, 800 years old, 57 feet in circumference. That's a big stump. Kokomo packs a big one-two tourism punch with the biggest stump right next to the biggest steer that ever lived. <laughs> then, a taxidermist dream. He probably brings more people to Kokomo than anything else. You think? Yeah. Bigger, I, I bigger attraction than the stump? Yes, bigger attraction than the stump, most definitely. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Have you ever seen such a big steer? We love big stuff. Have you ever seen such a big Santa? In America, it's chock full of it. That is a big chair. It's a big country gotta keep moving. Although we do occasionally pull into a rest stop, a road warrior's version of the sidewalk cafes of Paris. And it's a good place to pick up some driving tips. If you end up in a ditch upside down, you've done something wrong. <laughs> I'll write that down when I get back in there. Today, we're going to the RV Hall of Fame Museum and Library. I wanna look my best. Yes, the RV Museum in Elkhart, Indiana, 
where curator Carl Erie guides us through America's rich RV heritage. Now what's over here? This is a, uh, the oldest unit we have in the museum at this time. It's a 1913. It's pretty neat, luxurious. The units are exhibited in a natural, realistic setting. Ah, nice fire. <laughs> where are you folks from? Carl takes us back to a time when trailers were trailers. Old mahogany, beveled glass, two bedrooms, huge kitchen, 41 feet. This is a big sucker. There's a pop-up. Visitors recall the advent of the pop-up camper. This is a classic. Yep, Winnebago. And the coming of the Winnebago. There's a library for RV scholars. So these go all the way and back. a Hall of Fame featuring the giants the of, of the RV industry. Wally Byam is the founder of Airstream. This is uh, Malin Miller, credited with uh, the innovation of the slide-out unit. The slide-out family room. We have one of those on the one that we're driving. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Yeah. It's As another exciting day draws to a close, we have a nice place to stay. We're here. Thanks to Walmart which invites RVs to overnight in their parking lots. This is living. A place to set down some roots. Home is where you park it. Today's RVs are gracious and spacious. Time to meet the neighbors. Where do they go? Tonight, Pat Albert lives right next door. How long is it? 40. 40 feet? Uh, wow, ours is... I'm a full-timer. Uh, full-time? Full you don't have a house? No, not anymore. So how long have you been in an RV full-time? Five years, over five years. So you must like it? Yeah, I like it. What do you like about it? Well, I don't like to be too long on one place. Uh-huh. This thing, yeah, you pull this out. Pat showed us how to put up our awning, which was right neighborly of him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We made it. <laughs> yeah, boy, that looks good, doesn't it? And as I settled in for the night, I felt I'd found a little piece of heaven right here in the Walmart parking lot. Mmm. Why go out? <laughs> None of those guys. Heaven on wheels.